Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. In the previous Space News, physicist Wal Thornhill discussed the recent report that giant filamentary networks pervade the Milky Way galaxy, and these filaments are, quote, closely linked to the formation of stars. We now turn our attention to our own celestial neighborhood and the electrical connection between the Earth and the Sun. It was more than a century ago that the Norwegian experimentalist Christian Birkeland proposed that charged particles from the Sun were the cause of Earth's auroras. For decades, the astronomical mainstream, including the renowned mathematician Sidney Chapman, dismissed and ridiculed Birkeland's hypothesis. Decades after his death, Birkeland's thesis was proven correct. Yet even today, the significance of this confirmation has yet to fully register. Against a mountain of new evidence, most discussion of the Earth-Sun connection still assumes that the Sun and the Earth are neutral bodies in space. Yet all that we have learned in the space age and confirmed through ever finer data defies this assumption. Electric currents flowing through the conductive medium of plasma represent the electrical circuitry between the Earth and the Sun. This circuitry is routinely evidenced in science reports today. From the 2007 discovery of so-called magnetic ropes connecting the Earth and the Sun and driving Earth's auroras. The 2014 discovery, completely unexpected by mainstream scientists, that intense solar activity causes increased lightning on Earth. Proton storms from coronal mass ejections that sometimes reach the Earth in a matter of minutes. And today, a new confirmation of the electrical relationship between our planet and our star. An Australian undergraduate student is now being credited with having proven the existence of so-called plasma ducts, or oddly shaped tubular plasma structures above the Earth. The student, Cleo Loy, says of these structures, We measured their position to be about 600 kilometers above the ground in the upper ionosphere, and they appear to be continuing upwards into the plasma sphere. This is around where the neutral atmosphere ends, and we are transitioning to the plasma of outer space. We found that the ionization patterns in the ionosphere are quite structured. They flow in these tubular structures that are aligned with the Earth's magnetic field, and they can move of their own accord. Wal Thornhill discusses the significance of this discovery for the Electric Universe theory. The second report concerns the Earth and the discovery of electrons riding huge plasma ducts above the Earth. The work, supported by the Center for All Sky Astrophysics, sought to confirm 60-year-old theories about these structures. Reading the original 1953 paper titled An Investigation of Whistling Atmospherics, we find they are thought to be due to waves which originate in normal impulsive atmospherics from lightning and travel through the outer ionosphere following the lines of force of the Earth's magnetic field and crossing over the equator at a great height. During their journey they become dispersed so as to arrive as whistlers, Measurements of the degree of dispersion of the whistlers have been interpreted to yield information about the density of electrons in the atmosphere at very great heights. The paper concludes, and I quote, On the whole, the evidence supports the view that the ionization through which the whistlers travel is of extraterrestrial origin. It must be admitted, however, that the electron densities required at great heights are uncomfortably large. End of quote. This conclusion accords with the Electric Universe model of an electrical connection between the Earth and the Sun's circuit. It is expected, therefore, that electrical activity in the Earth's atmosphere, like lightning, and higher in the ionosphere, is influenced by solar activity. Notably, the ionization has been found to transition to the plasma of outer space. Below the ionosphere, the conducting path for this external electrical power includes the upward lightning flashes called sprites and cloud-to-ground lightning below the clouds. This supports the controversial discovery in 2001 by Professor Edgar Baring, a physicist at the University of Houston in Texas, who said, The charge that produces sprites is not below in the cloud, it's in the mesosphere itself. In July 1993, I said at a conference in Cambridge, England, the principal difficulty in understanding the origin of lightning is likely to be the assumption that the Earth is a closed electrical system with no input from the solar plasma environment via the magnetosphere. This new report seems to verify part of that circuit. 
However, once again, the report defers any real understanding by referring to these magnetic field-aligned Birkeland current cylinders simply as unexplained plasma ducts. For continuous updates on space news from the Electric Universe, stay tuned to thunderbolts.info.